Arsenal Football Club are top of the league. And not only are they top of the league, but they are behaving and looking and conducting themselves in the way that champions do. Everything that they did today away from home at Brighton, a very difficult place to go, an especially difficult place for Arsenal to go. The Amex has not been a kind ground to them. Everything about the victory down on the south coast stinks of champions. That is how champions behave. Lots of people were talking about the game that Arsenal were facing here. They saw it as a fixture where Arsenal could drop points. They saw it as an opportunity. They saw there being jeopardy in this result. And Arsenal answered those unequivocally. They answered those doubts. What happened? People were saying, Brighton are good. Brighton don't lose. Brighton haven't lost at home since August. Brighton haven't lost at home for 12 games. Brighton are a fantastic side. It's not going to be easy for Arsenal to win. Blah, blah, blah. And what did Arsenal do? Arsenal went, shut up, wallop. Three points. Shut up, wallop. Clean sheet. Shut up, wallop. Another three goals. And that is what champions do. Have that. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. You talk about how good Brighton are. You talk about the difficulty at the Amex. You talk about how good a manager Roberto De Zerbi is. We'll simply move to the top of the league. And that is what Arsenal have done. And the spine of this Arsenal team are sensational. You know, when I think about good teams of a bygone era at Chelsea, Czech, Terry, Lampard, Drogba, that is how you win games. And when you look at this spine that Arsenal have created, it really is something special. They are so miserly at the back, so stingy, so rugged, so aggressive, and they are bullies at the back. I think that we often talk about the brilliance of Arsenal going forward, don't we? We talk about Bukayo Saka, 30 goal contributions, and so we should. We talk about the brilliance of Leandro Chossard and the arrogance running the length of the pitch against his former club, giving it the big one to their fans after they booed him. You talk about that. You talk about Kai Havertz scoring goals. Of course we do. He scored 10, five goals this calendar year alone. He's already exceeded the expectations that I thought he was capable of doing for Arsenal in his entire Arsenal career, let alone what he's done for them in 31 games. So we talk about that and we wax lyrical about Odegaard and Saka and Martinelli and Jesus and whatever else. But maybe what we don't do enough is acknowledge the robust defence that Arteta has created. The defence is the reason why they are such a force. They are such a unit and they are basically impossible to beat. You cannot score against this team. David Raya is making save after save and keeping clean sheet after clean sheet and breaking record after record. Not since 1997 have Arsenal conceded less goals. Not since 1997 have Arsenal gone this amount of games with this consecutive clean sheet record intact. It is amazing what they have done. And when you look across that back line, there is hero after hero. And I'm so envious of it. They are sensational. Gabriel, you know, people talk about Saliba an awful lot. I think people are very generous to William Saliba without acknowledging quite how good Gabriel is. Gabriel is everything to this Arsenal team. When Arsenal attack, Gabriel is a thorn in the opposition side. When Arsenal defend, Gabriel will do everything to make sure that you do not score against them. And he brings something crucial to this Arsenal team. When I use the word bully in most contexts, the word bully has negative connotations. But on a football pitch, you want a bully. You need somebody who will not allow you to lose. You need somebody who will not allow the opposition to get into your head. And it is essential that every team has somebody that will marshal the opposition and make sure that the bullying isn't a one-way street. Chelsea, back in the day, you couldn't bully us. You know, we had players who were silky and maybe slightly vulnerable. Players like Arjun Robin and Joe Cole. But you couldn't get near them because Michael Ballack will kill you. Because Michael Essien will have you around the throat. Because Frank Lampard will two-foot you. You cannot get near them. And Gabriel performs that function for Arsenal. If you think that you can have a go at Arsenal, Maybe you concede that they're better football. They're a better football team than you. And you think, what we're going to do is we're going to get at them in the way that we used to get at them back in the day, in the way that the previous Arsenal team were slightly vulnerable. If you try to do that to this Arsenal team, Gabriel gets you around the throat. Not only does he do that, though, he is an elite defender in his own right. Wonderful, wonderful at defending in his own box. Very good when facing his own goal. But then in the other box, lethal in front of goal. He's like John Terry and Steve Bruce. Scores big goals for Arsenal. And that is worth its weight in gold. Then think about what Ben White brings to this Arsenal team. You know, I said, and I got a bit of stick for this, but I said that Ben White is Arsenal's best player since the turn of the year. So since Arsenal went on their um, winter break, they went to Dubai. Since they got back, every game that Ben White has played this calendar year, he has been the best player in the team. 
He has been sensational. Doesn't put a foot wrong. Elite defender. Wonderful going forward. Providing assists. Pirouetting on the ball in midfield and creating goals. He is simply fantastic. A flawless footballer and the best right back in the league. Arsenal's best player. But again, we don't really talk about it. It doesn't really get the recognition that it deserves, even in a negative way. Like, I don't think Zinchenko has been very good. I would go so far as saying that Kirill should be starting. And when Timber gets back, they are going to be a force to be reckoned with. But we just don't talk about their defence enough. And David Raya, you know, David Raya already has the golden gloves sewn up. He already has it sewn up. David Raya has already got four more clean sheets than any other goalkeeper in the league. Sounds impressive already. Listen to this. You ain't heard nothing yet. Not only has he got four more clean sheets than any other goalkeeper in the league, but he missed the first, first four games of the season for Arsenal and he missed the two games where he was ineligible against Brentford. So he has four more clean sheets and has played way less games. He has got the golden gloves sewn up already and yet he hasn't had as many opportunities to do it. So whilst we should acknowledge how brilliant Gabriel Martinelli is, and Bukayo Saka, 30 goal contributions already, his best yet. You know, he is emulating his icon, his hero, that is Cristiano Ronaldo. He is becoming that goal force of a footballer. we got to talk about what Arteta has built. I think you could almost say that Arteta's best creation is this miserly defence because it really is sensational. And I tell you what, on so many occasions, I've doubted Mikel Arteta. And I make a pledge to you today, I'll never do it again. Back in the day when he got rid of Aubameyang, I thought that was a mistake because they got rid of Aubameyang and I felt like it cost them Champions League football that year. I was wrong. They were right to get rid of him. Even if it did mean sacrificing Champions League football that year, they are a better team today because they got rid of him. When they signed Aaron Ramsdale, I was scoffing. I said, you know, he's relegation fodder and all that. And I was wrong. When they signed Ben White, I wasn't particularly impressed. I was wrong. So many times, even when they brought in David Raya, I thought, why has he done that? He's destabilised his back line. Aaron Ramsdale last season was very good. The season before, he was phenomenal. Saves galore, wonderful in the net, puts his neck on the line and crucially starts Arsenal attacks. Very good ball distribution and stuff. And then they brought David Raya in. I was arguing that Raya wasn't even better than Ramsdale. How wrong I was. Never again will I doubt Mikel Arteta because he is simply getting it right. And he himself is so responsible for so many of these Arsenal points. Look at what he did at the Etihad. Went away to the Etihad and he turned into a hybrid of Jose Mourinho and Diego Simeone. He got his team defensively rugged and he ground out the point that he so desperately needed. Not only did he do that, but when necessary, he changes the system and he plays an expansive game of football. A few weeks ago, I think he deduced that this is going to be a really tight title race and goal difference could be significant. Suddenly, they're scoring five here and six at West Ham and whatever else. And he is constantly reimagining himself, reinventing himself and finding a different way to identify, a different way to define Arsenal Football Club. You know, they are a team that are capable of doing basically anything. They can score from, you know, slick, beautiful moves, Jorginho in round the back and a tap in. They can score a wonderful crafted goal that will involve some vision that is rarely seen from somebody like Martin Odegaard, or they can oof it into the box and they can stick their nut on it and they can hope for the best and they can have a Steve Bold flick on and a Tony Adams header into the back of the net. They can do it all. And that is what makes this Arsenal team so good. They're so good in attack. They're so solid at defending. The technical ability in midfield is sensational. But I think that the biggest contribution, the biggest asset that this Arsenal team have their biggest strength is Mikel Arteta's pragmatism, their adaptability. They find a way, they play in a different way. And now they've got themselves into a situation where no team in the league has scored more goals than them or conceded fewer than them. You know, you look at the mini league, which is so revealing. No team between Arsenal, Liverpool and Man City in that mini league, Arsenal have taken four points off both. And they are given a tonic by that. They are fortified by that information and they are now going for it on multiple fronts. They now have the wonderful situation where they have won today. It can only get better for them this weekend because Liverpool may drop points and then they have the, the luxury and I do call it a luxury correctly of playing Bayern Munich. This is what football is all about. This is what you're in it for. 
Playing Bayern Munich in the Champions League, it's not a hindrance. It's not an inconvenience. It is a luxury and something to be cherished. I am so envious. I really am. I wish that Chelsea were playing Bayern Munich. I would love to have a trip to the Allianz Arena booked. Sadly, it's not looking like it's going to happen for me this year or next. But you never know. But for Arsenal, this has been the perfect day at the office. They did everything that they had to do. They watched Man City win earlier in the day and they answered it with a plum. A stunning 3-0 away victory. They got the three points. They moved back to the top of the league. They kept a clean sheet. And Mikel Arteta can watch match of the day with a cigar in his mouth, planning his tactics for Bayern Munich. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a like. Please click subscribe. And I hope you all have a wonderful night.